Welcome back to Code Station 33, and this is Introduction to Programming. Today, we are going to take a look at another structure in the Arduino code system that allows us to make some more decisions. This time, though, the decision is going to run over and over and over again. We call that an iterative process, which is a loop. So let's dive right in. The loop we're going to look at today is called a while loop. You actually have some experience with while loops and just may not even realize it. Our void loop that we have inside of the Arduino system is essentially a while loop. It will keep running forever and ever until something makes it stop. Namely, we unplug the Arduino. Our while loops will have a little bit more testing ability than just unplugging the Arduino. When we have our structure for our while loop, we have our condition that we test, much like we test with our if-then conditions. All of the conditions that we created for our if-then conditions can be created with our while loops. So if the particular condition is true, then we can execute our statements over and over and over again while that condition stays true. The difference between the void loop and our while is that the void loop condition is always true. So that way it keeps running forever and ever. We could simulate that same thing just by writing while, and instead of the condition being x equals five or x greater than six, we can say while true. And that's always true. So our conditional loop will run forever and ever and ever. So let's dive into some code and take a look at some of the things that we can do with our while loop. So I have created this little circuit here called an LED flash rate. And let's see what it does. Um, we have our LED on it like we've seen before. It's connected to pin three. We have our button which is connected to pin two. And then we have our grounds appropriately grounded. So now let's run it and you can see our LED is blinking slowly. When I press the button, and while the button is being pressed, the LED is blinking fast. So while the button is pressed, the LED is blinking fast. So let's see what that looks like in code and how we went through and did that. So the first thing we did is set up some of our pin definitions. So that way we know which pin matches what. And like I said, the LED pin is going to be pin 3. The button pin is pin 2. We have some other variables. Toggle state. Now remember that is now a Boolean state because we didn't I initialize it to anything. It's going to have the value of 1 or 0. So it's going to start with initialize the value of 0 by default. Then we have button state, which we are initializing to the value of one, which will also act like a Boolean for us. We're gonna set up our pin modes. We have to set up our LED pin to output and we have to set our button pin to input pull up. You always have to make sure you set your pin modes so that way your pins are doing the correct thing in the setup loop. Otherwise it just isn't gonna work. Then we have our void loop. Now remember the void loop really could be replaced with while true. So that's effectively what's going on with our void loop. It's always, always running, and it will only stop when we unplug it. We're going to read the button state from the button pin. We've done that before, so determine whether or not it's pressed or not. And here is our first while statement. While the button state is equal, equal to zero. So if the button is not pressed, what are we going to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is switch the toggle state. So toggle state is equal to not toggle state. Then we're going to write the toggle state to the pin, which should turn it on. Then we're going to delay for 200 milliseconds, which is pretty fast. Then we're going to set the button state again to, to read digital, digital pin. So we're reading the value again to make sure the button is still um, not being pressed. And then we're back up to here, button state. So 
to the button state is zero. Notice that we read the button state the first time outside the loop. But now that statement is not going to be reached because we're inside the loop. This is why we have to read the button state at the bottom of the loop. So we're going to go through this over and over and over again, and the delay will be 200 milliseconds. So that's the really, really fast blinking of the light. The slow blinking of the light happens outside the loop. So if I'm not pressing um, the button, if it's just up, then we're going to switch the toggle state, just like we did inside the loop, delay uh, digital write to the LED pin, and this time it's only a delay of a thousand. Now remember, we also have a loop here. This is gonna jump way back up to the top of the void loop, and again, read the button state and then check the button state to see if whether we should blink fast and the delay would be 200 or skip that code because the button is not pressed and we should blink the light at a thousand so every one second so this gives you an idea of how our while loop works let's take a look at it again in action and we can kind of compare the code to the action There we go. So I'm gonna start it. Right now the button's not pressed and it's blinking at a thousand milliseconds. That's one second. So what's happening is we're going through this loop, setting the digital read, ignoring this while loop because this state is not true, and then just flipping the button, writing the pin, waiting a second, going back up here, skipping this, flipping the light on and off, right into the pin, waiting a, sec a, th a second. Back up to here, and yada, yada, yada. Now when I press the button, now the light is blinking faster. So effectively, we are just in this while loop here because the button state is zero. The button is pressed. Now remember, the button state being zero or one, uh, one is, is unpressed and zero is pressed because that weird thing with the button that it's always sending a five volt signal when unpressed. Our toggle state again flips, we write our pin, we delay 200 milliseconds, and we read the digital button again. Again, we need to make sure we read that digital button again so that when we get back to the top of the loop, we know whether or not the state has changed. If we don't read that, once I press the button, the light will continue to blink essentially forever because the button state would never be changed again and we would never actually read the value again. Let me stop our simulation. There we go. So the while loop allows us to continue and repeat a certain action over and over and over again while a particular condition is true. This is a very useful piece of code, and we're going to dive in to look at some more complicated versions of it in the next lesson. See you next time.